Hi, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at this position. Uh, I composed this position. I don't know if anyone else has, but uh, this is my creation. So I would recommend you to evaluate this position and uh, um, my question to you is how can I win this? Um, the, the truth is, this position is actually a draw, despite how many extra pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six extra pawns in a Rugan game. Uh, it's pretty amazing, actually. Um, in any endgame book, you're going to find the position where you know there's a g-pawn and a king on g7, with this construction of the pawn being on a7 and the rook on a8. Um, the thing is that uh, white can never win that because the rook is paralyzed, and when the rook activates, he's going to lose the pawn on uh, a7, and uh, the king and g pawn versus uh, the, the king and rook is going to be uh, just a pretty basic draw. So that's when I asked myself the question what if there were all the pawns in the g file? So, what if there were five pawns in the g file uh, and the king hides here? How does white make progress? Well, Hard to say. I mean, the thing is that the rook is still paralyzed, and I don't really see a way how the king could assist uh, the pawns. And uh, the problem is that if the king tries to go down the h file, then there will be always move rook to a1, and uh, on the move king h3, there will be like a rook h1 even checkmate. So that is why. Uh, I'm gonna just make some random moves. Uh, it's interesting, maybe king takes g6 is possible, but just to keep things simple, because the point being on the move rook to g8, uh, king to h7, and, uh, and on queen, there's the move rook f2, uh, probably with a perpetual check, as funny as that looks, but uh, I'll just show that variation. Uh, king g6, check. This looks like a draw to me. I don't. I don't know. I mean, uh, the point being that uh, once the king runs like this, this is stalemate. Uh, this is pretty amazing. But okay, that's um, a cheap trick. Uh, probably it's less advantageous for white to have all those pawns. I mean. The thing is that the position would be much more complicated if white did not have this g5 pawn. Because uh, then uh, sometimes the, this white can sacrifice the a pawn and try to bring his king to g5 and try to uh, give some sort of check on the seventh rank to try to, you know, by playing like move like rook to the fifth rank, rook f5 and rook f7. The problem is that, uh, well, the problem is that white really cannot do that even without the g5 pawn, and it's uh, still a draw. But uh, it would make things more complicated. But this is actually quite simple. So let's make some random moves. And as you can see, uh, really, there's really nothing that uh, White can do. He can't really escape the checks. He can't really assist the, his pawns. So eventually. Uh, I would assume something like this happens. Eventually when the rook activates, he'll give up the pawn. He has no way of making progress. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm making random moves, but it, it's very interesting because this position is actually a drop because white cannot really make progress. I mean, uh, this is a quite a basic concept in a rook end game uh, where uh, the rook has no way of activating uh, and the uh, very dangerous resource on a7 will be lost eventually. So that was my composition. Um, if you have any other positions, as I always say at the end of my videos that you want me to show, please leave in the comments. All right, thanks.